Lomo 400, Contacts G1, 35 millimeter F2. So this is a G1 I just picked up from my friend Chris Visser. We traded cameras actually. Uh, I swapped in my Olympus XA that was sadly collecting dust. Um, and then I picked up this 35 millimeter F2 and a 90 millimeter F2.8 that's in this bag. Um, gonna load some Lomo 400. How do I get through this little slot without dropping this camera? Um, let's find out. This is so not what I should be doing right now. Are you watching my footing? Probably need my other hand. Not a good idea. It's, uh, I did not think this through. Um, I'm just gonna climb up this backwards. See that works. Pass me the baton. There we go. And now we get to watch you climb up. Where are you? There you go. I know, you're wearing boots. Where is she? She made it. We made it. Ready for the view? Check this out. In the background, it's the Eastern Sierras. down a little bit, right there, center, all right, hold that, hold that. So while Kat loads her film, she's gonna shoot an expired roll of Kodak Gold. Uh, I can talk about this thing. So, I've shot maybe like six rolls through this so far, and I can't put it down because these are the nicest, uh, frames I've gotten on 35 millimeter film. They are so clear. It's like baby medium format quality. It's kind of wild. Um, but I've never been disappointed with Zeiss Glass, so that has a lot to do with it. And it's just super fun to use. I mostly use it on auto. I've maybe gotten like six frames in like six or seven rolls that have been blurry. Um, so not many. I think the thing is you have to take your time with focusing and confirming your focus because on the bottom it has a distance scale in meters and it tells you what plane is in focus. So as long as you're checking that, you shouldn't really miss focus. As far as cons, I don't know. There's none. I mean, I'm sure there are. I just like, I haven't run into any issues with it yet with that like I just like don't like or something um I haven't run out of battery I mean there was that one time you forgot to set the what is oh the ISO? the ISO yeah that was my bad because I had it set to so you can have it set to read the DX code or you can manually override the ISO I forgot to change it once <laughs> oops and then the other time was like you can change the uh, shutter speed I had it at a 60th because I was syncing with the flash. I forgot to change it back. Oops, user error. At the very least though, I haven't left the lens cap on, seeing as this is a rangefinder and I don't normally shoot rangefinders. I'm more conscious of making that mistake, so I always take the lens cap off. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest bummer is like, if it breaks, you can't repair it. Um, but these aren't that expensive, so you can kind of replace it. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm investing more in the lenses than I am in the camera, because the lenses are doing most of the heavy work. So I can just pick up another body. It's fine, right? <laughs> and there's the sign. Let's get it.